What's going on, guys? Welcome to Rabbits Used Cars. You know what? I love C4 Corvettes. I think everybody in the world knows I love C4 Corvettes. C4 Corvettes are my favoriteest Corvette generations. This is the second white C4 Corvette we've had in here. Of course, we had my 88 35th anniversary also in here. But this little LT1 car brings up a really good Corvette story. I love it because it's gotten to the point now where, like, I'll see cars and I remember. Like, that reminds me of my old, wait a minute. Uh -huh. Got a story. Yeah, I mean, you got to think about it. I mean, you know, it's just so much life experience and so many things I've seen, and so many things that I would love to share that I can't share. Thanks, Google. So I'm going to have to dumb this story down a little bit. Just keep myself in the safe side of things. Like, I have to do that from time to time. But I had a Corvette that I absolutely loved and drove, and it was just like this. It was a 96. This is a 93. But virtually the same car, but mine was an LT4 versus the LT1. Car-wise, actually even had the same wheels, as the kids call them, reps, Z06 wheels. But mine had the black Z06 wheels versus the chrome. Like I said, jet black car, black insides. How I acquired this car was a really interesting thing. I had a friend. Yeah, we'll go like that. I had a friend that worked at a title loan company. And she would call me up from time to time when they got interesting things in repossessions. And I used to go in there and buy a lot of their repos. And it's actually a really good way for you guys that are flipping out there. If you have a title loan place you know, in your town, usually the cars parked behind the title loan place are repos. So stick your head in the door and you'll be surprised the cars that you can buy for payoff out of the back of a title loan place. She called me up and she said, hey, we got a Corvette here. You may be interested in it. It's a little rough. It looks like somebody's hit it or fell on it. And I mean, she wasn't the brightest bulb in the box. So I just kind of, whatever. So I rode over and part behind, sure enough, was a black 96 Corvette, six speed, LT4. No keys, you know, doors were open. The doors were unlocked, but had no keys to it. Cars repoed in and the center of the hood was killed. Like it was just like scraped straight up. It didn't mess with the nose, but the hood was just busted all to hell. Thing is, this is the most expensive piece of a C4 Corvette is the bonnet, is that hood. Cause it's huge. I mean, it's virtually the whole damn front end. You know, they're, they're really pricey and really expensive, but like how in the hell did the front end of this thing get messed up so bad, you know? And the rest of the car was in pretty good shape. So we got to talking and she goes, hey, I can sell you this thing for 3,000 bucks. 96 Corvette, six speed, no key. Don't know how many miles it's got on it. I know the last title stamp said it had about 60,000 on it. That was about three years ago. Mm. Clean title, another one where Carfax didn't catch major body damage. But I'm thinking, yeah. We'll buy it. So I got the car, sent a roll back, pick it up, scooped it up, brought it to the shop. Very first thing I did is took the VIN, called my local Chevrolet dealership, ordered a key for it. Got a key for it. Of course, it's got the little, the little pill inside of it with the resistor. So we had to get the right one of those for it. Stuck the key in, flipped the switch. It had 69,000 miles on it. Score. That's a good thing. Fired it up. Sounds good. We already popped the hood on it, had headers on it. A few little, you know, little add-ons, throttle body, things like that, cold air intake. Sounds good, ran good. Check engine light was on, just silly things. But the car ran extremely good. It's got this big busted hood. It had factory wheels on it too, also thin. You know, got the car and started calling around. Well, these bonnets are the same from 84 to 96. Called around and found a junkyard North Carolina that had a bonnet. I bought it for 300 bucks, which was a deal. It wasn't perfect. I had to do a little body work to it, but it was way better shape than what I had. Called around, found a body shop that could paint my hood for me. And that hood, you know, there's a lot of alignment to it to get it straight. Like I said, you know, it, it does a big movement there. So you need to have it squared and all that. So I dropped the hood off and the car and just said, hey, fix it. Call me when it's ready. You know, they swapped the headlights out and all that stuff. And the headlights worked right. The car, like, it was even clean on the inside. Nice glass top. 
six speed, drove it around the block, little car run out good. I mean, hell, big static on two way radio, little LT4. You know, back in the day, that was hot shit. Yeah, I meant it cheap. So I got my hood all out the door. I had probably 1200 bucks. Just a great little car. You know, I mean, hell, at the time, this was 05, 06. So it's 10 years old, you know, and I had, you know, what, $45, $4,300 in it. You know, hell, rough book on it was 11, 12 grand still. So, I mean, I'm in the car right. Good miles. And, you know, this guy literally lost his car for three grand, which blows my mind with title loan cars, which is another reason why you need to check out your title loan places. I mean, there, there's sometimes there's some good deals there. So, anyway, got the car fixed. And it, was, it turned out beautiful. The hood matched the paint. You know, we cut and buffed the car. And it looked great. It looked just nice. This is 93. And, I mean, just a good-looking car. So, I'm driving it around. And, you know, just a cool little Corvette and cruising around a little bit. Well, a buddy of mine says, hey, I like that Corvette. I said, well, hey, I'd love to sell it to you. We put a deal together and drove it to his finance company, and they looked at it. They wrote me a check for it right there on the spot, and he got him a pretty new black Corvette to ride around with, and I had a pretty fat little check addressed to me. No big deal. He keeps the car for about six months. Drives it around. He puts on the black powder-coated Z06 rep wheels and does a few other little odds and ends to it, you know, just little touches. He put the red Grand Sport little rookie stripes on the fender and the blackouts covering up the turn signals and the taillights. Just a neat looking car. I mean, the car had kind of a sinister look to it, just this black Corvette. And it had a great roll, had a great sound to it, had stainless exhaust on it. And just a cool car, you know? And, and, and you know, this guy sold to him, right? It was a buddy of mine. You know, he drove for a little while. He told me, he goes, man, I don't really need this vet. He goes, you know, I really need to get me a truck and this, 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 this. Well, come find out I ended up getting it back. And hell, that was better. And I'll be honest with you, I bought it back for less than I sold it to him for. So got the car. Hell, I drove around again. It's got about 75,000 miles on it now. Still a great car. I'm driving around. I actually was dating a, a girl that lived in Asheville, North Carolina, which is about an hour and 20 minutes away. And I used to drive it every day. And I'd drive, you know, up to Asheville and go see her. And, you know, it's just kind of a little hot date car, you know, and, you know, riding around and all this stuff. Well, about this time is when I got my C6. So, I mean, this one didn't really blow my skirt up too much anymore. I had a guy I used to deal guns with. You know, it was kind of funny because he was a preacher and a gunsmith, which was kind of funny. And he built automatic transmissions. Anyway, he said, man, I like that little Corvette you got. And I said, well, hey, it's for sale. And I sold him it and a Cadillac sedan to on the same day. He had his Saturday night car and he had his Sunday going to church car. So he kept him for a little while. Well, he got in a little pinch and he needed some money. He calls me up and he goes, hey, you know anybody want to buy this little black Corvette? I said, well, damn, Jim, how much you want for your vet? He goes, I don't know, what will you give me for it? I said, damn, I can't buy it and sell it too, Jim. Give me a price. He goes, you still got that Colt government issue that you got for me? I said, sure do. He goes, how about that Colt in five grand? I said, how about that Colt in four? Never shot the gun, just had it. He goes, deal. So I did a swap. Now I got it back again. By this time, I already sold my C6 vet. How I drove it around. I loved it. I mean, it's just a great car. Car had about 80,000 miles on it now. Still a phenomenal car. And he'd done a few more things to it. It just made it, every time I got it, it was better. These cars had bows, and, and they were notorious for giving problems when they got a little age. The bow speakers breaking down and all that stuff. He read it, he had all that redone, had all the stereo stuff gone through. This was a great car. Put a new clutch in it, you know, put some kind of, I forget, center force or something good clutch in it. And I mean, like, just a fun car. So, I got that vet back and I drove it around and I'll never forget, I drove it home and I parked it in my driveway. The thing about my neighborhood is everybody knew I was kind of like the fast Freddy with cars. Everybody wanted to come by and see what old Rob had. And I had this one friend, he loved it. He loved it the second time I had it. And now I got it back. And he goes, man, I like that Corvette. I like that Corvette. I just ain't got the money to buy it. And you know, this, this, and this. Well, as luck would have it, he had, at the time, he bought a 2006. The truck was like a year and a half, two years old time. 
Dodge Ram. And, you know, we're probably sitting in seven, eight with, you know, at the time frame. So, I mean, you got a two year old Ram loaded out, 1500, Hemi, 20s, black, good looking truck, 35,000 miles. He only owed like $4,500 on it. He said, I tell you what I'll do. You pay my truck off and give me the vet, and you can have it. So you're telling me I give you my Corvette and $4,500, and you're going to give me this Hemi Ram. I feel like such a redneck when I say, you're Hemi Ram. And I'm not a Dodge truck guy, but I'm a numbers guy. And I knew that two-year-old Dodge truck was worth way more than my 12-year-old Corvette. But he was just in love with it. The car had a great look. He wanted a cool cruiser and wanted to lose the payment. Let's do it. Paid that bad boy off. Riding around in my new Ram on my 20-inch wheels. Had them little stupid wagon flower-looking wheels on it. Had Flowmasters on it. It was a good-looking Ram. I mean, it was a good-looking truck. You know, I rode it around for about a month. I sold that truck for $19,000. Like that. Now, the craziest part of this story is, is what happened to the vet afterwards. So he got this Corvette, and like every Corvette guy, he was married, and yada, yada, yada. Well, now he's not, and the wife's done left, and just everything's done went to shit at his house. You know, he still got his Corvette, and now he likes to go out drinking all the time, and, you know, Corvette's done ruined his life, but he loves his car and all this BS. And the worst part is, I'm thinking to myself, well, I'd like to get that little black Corvette back. I said, this thing's just a good luck charm. And then I got that phone call. And it was my buddy. He calls me up. He goes, well, I don't think you ever have to worry about getting that black Corvette back again. He put it in a ditch running about 40 mile an hour and tore it all to hell. That's the thing about these cars. There's not a lot to them. And they don't do well when you start putting them in ditches and things like that. Even at 40 mile an hour, which is pretty damn fast to stick something in a ditch tore it all two pieces, ripped the front, I mean, killed the front end on it, pushed the wheels back, bust the floorboard, buckled everything, and I mean, just tore it all to hell. It broke my heart to see it. Sit on roll back, just all crippled up, and I mean, looking at my van, I mean, it, it was so clean. It was such a nice car, it made me so much money, and I just thinking, look what you did to it. You know what, if that thing was still rolling straight, I'd probably buy it back tomorrow, but unfortunately, she's done went to that little cruising spot in the sky. But I still think about the old black C4. Every time I see a clean C4, I think about my little, my little Darth Vader vet. That, that just, I don't know. It's just there's always that one car that always just like, you know what? I'd buy it back just instantly if I could. Guys, we'll catch you next time at Rabbit Shoes Cars. What's going on? So I sold him a pearl white Cadillac and a jet black cat and a jet black Corvette. Literally. I was in six. Yeah, six. Everything's all went to shit in his neighborhood and good. Because I'm not doing it again.